Hello and welcome back to my channel, which is dedicated philosophy, music, culture, so humanitarians in general. And what can art teach? What can we from art and culture learn? And what is there in it that can inspire us to learn? And this is the main question for today. And this is significant questions for, for me. Truth and matter is the main hermeneutic work of Hans Georg Gadamer. And this work is dedicated to this question, to this question also. And its aim, uh, its task, its aim, aim, uh, according to the definition of the author himself, is to reveal the experience of comprehending uh, the truth beyond the limits of scientific methodology. Here we can see the influence of the teacher of Gadamer, of course, you know, it's Martin Heidegger. And Martin Heidegger, who was also very skeptical about the absolute self-control of the cognizing subject. What can we know is the main question all over the time. And the essence of Heidegger's hermeneutical reflection for Gadamer is not that we encounter a logical circle here, but rather than the circle has an ontologically positive meaning. Its very description is such as such quite convincing for any interpreter who knows what he is doing. And this theme is also mm, discovered in in the truth and method of Gadamer. Gadamer criticizes the Cartesian method, uh, Cartesian ideas about the me method. Uh, the hermeneutic aim or task uh, becomes the actual statement of the question and uh, the truth cannot be expressed clearly for Gadamer. So, uh, truth is only a glimmer of being or enlightenment or just flesh of being. Uh, consciousness for Gadamer is also partly being and cultural tradition and language ensure the essence of being in consciousness, our belonging to a cultural tradition always determines our perception, you know, and percep perception and understanding and um, appre app apprehending uh, and hermeneutic of some kind of uh, text or book or um, art and so on and so forth. Thus our consciousness cannot be completely can thus our consciousness cannot be completely cleansed of the connection with our history, with our cultural tradition. And this connection cannot even be completely traced or tracked, traced and objectified. We are always present in the field of our cultural tradition uh, of a certain so to speak, certain ontological game. And the purpose of this game is contained in itself. The game has rules, but its uh, process is unpredictable. And such thinkers as Heisenberg, Gardini, um, you know, and others have long, uh, have long emphasized uh, that there is a game moment in itself in the exercise of religion, for example, in uh, exercise of a religious cult um, by some, somebody, by a person. Uh, to understand that the game element of art manifests itself not only negatively as freedom from um, target settings 
it's absolutely freedom from any kind of improvement or, or something like this. But also as an independent impulse. It is still necessary to turn the, to the element characteristics, elementary character, characteristics of the human game. When we talk about it, what do we mean? Obviously, the rhythmic repetition of this game, uh, repetition of a movement of this game. And uh, let's recall at least some terms of speech, such as the game of light or the game of waves. It's just a rhythm and this rhythm has its own structure. And in this rhythm such a constant repetition is represented and movement in opposite directions not connected with a specific goal and this moment uh, was emphasized in uh, such work of Gadamer as, for example, actuality of the beautiful. The game is the general mode of functional of being. The game is the general mode of functioning of being. At the same time, there may be several participants or one person, um, but in any case, they are involved in the game. They are involved in this process, but they do not own it. Maybe the process owns them. The ontological game is an experience that transcends reality and it's a very significant question for Gadamer and also for Martin Heidegger, of course. And Gadamer also considers philosophizing and art is an ontological game, you know. Art teaches true understanding through real hermeneutic, an appeal to the essence. Since history doesn't develop linearly and the model of historicism is one and many rhythmic repetitions, structure and repetitions, this, rep rep this rhythmic repetitions transform the game and the results of such transformations, results of such transformations are unpredictable, also unpredictable. Poetry is more philosophical than history and you know this phrase um, from Aristotle uh, Poetics and it's given by Gadamer in the um, actuality of, uh, of the beautiful or of the beauty. I, in the same place, uh, in the same text, uh, while history only describes something that happened, emphasizing the how it happened. The poetry conveys to us how it could have been. It teaches us to see the universal in human actions and passions. And this process is very interesting for Gadamer. His um, intuitions and his intellectual Mm -hmm. His intellectual activity was attached, were attached by this process. And since the universal, of course, is the aim of philosophy, universal as a whole, also is the aim of art when it implies the universal is more philosophical than history. Thus, historical ontology is a way of clarifying the science and art, uh, science of the spirit, uh, while meaning thus, historical ontology is a way of clarifying the sciences of spirit or humanitarians, while meaning is a product of the game of being. And the sciences of the spirit are always understood through their reliance on life and on art. So, I hope this was uh, this was useful for you and thank you for your attention and see you in the next video bye